Hello again. This is Deadly as Art here. I'm going to try something different today. I'm not going to so much speak on current events in sports, but more or less create somewhat of a fantasy boxing match, if you will. What I'll be doing is basically taking fighters of this era and not so much comparing them, but more so putting them up against fighters of the past. Now, once again, this is not a comparison video of one fighter to the next fighter. This is merely a video placing two opponents from different eras together in a matchup. Now, before I before I start, I'm not going to give my opinion on who I believe will win the fight. I'll let that you know, I'll let the YouTube masses decide that. I'll let them formulate their own opinion on each fighter, the facets of each fighter, and go from there. So, the two fighters today that I'll be starting out with will be the current middleweight champion, Sergio Martinez, against the past great known as Marvelous Marvin Hagler. So, what do we know about Marvin? We know Marvin was born to be a boxer. The man has the heart of a fighter. I don't think anyone can deny that. He had a style that could suit any boxers. You know, wow. Uh, he, he, he can, I don't even know how to put it in the words, basically, that he had a strategy against every opponent. His style basically molded around the opponents that he faced. I mean, he started off boxing as a natural southpaw. But boxers and, and, and managers alike were so afraid to get in there against him because he was a southpaw that he had to conform to a natural orthodox stance, which is a righty. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of like how we sound like a lot of fighters now, like especially Winky Wright. He was, he's a, he's a lefty, but no one wanted to fight a lefty. He basically gave off an aura of a haggler. And that's that's one thing about haggler that I find so fascinating is that a guy, like you're afraid of a lefty, you know, and they don't want to fight a guy like haggler. I mean, I can understand what he did in the ring. He, he damaged a lot of opponents. You know, the guy is marvelous, to say the least. He I mean, he possessed a tool that every fighter could have, you know. He, I mean, like, he had a, what is it, what is it, he has like some of the, like, you know, history's greatest fighters are known for having very few attributes, but, but they might lack something that they desperately need in the ring. Like Muhammad Ali is a great example. He's known for his speed and grace, but he, nece he necessarily never had knockout power, you know? Marvin, like I said before, Marvin was bred. For the sport of boxing, you know, he only stood five foot nine. He had very long arms. You know, he could out jab taller opponents. He was known as a brawler, but even I believe that's inaccurate in some cases. I mean, he won over Tommy Hearns. He KO'd him, and that fight is was what at the time, Ring Magazine's fight of the year. I mean, it was like, it is as if Hagler could beat everyone he stepped in the ring against, you know? He was, I mean, Hearns was tall, lightning quick, and he was a power puncher. But there's one thing that I, I don't believe Hearns was ready for, is that the fact that Hagler could take a punch. Hagler was known as having one of the best chins in boxing, if not the best chin in boxing. I mean... His, his his jaw structure, his chin, you know, the band of muscles that line the forehead, you know, physis physicians seen that that was thicker and stronger than normal. And it seems that, like, it's almost as if Marvin was impervious to pain. It was really, like, really X-Men-like, you know? It's like the dude was, like, Wolverine or some shit, you know? Like, he just, you would hit him with everything, including the kitchen sink, and nothing would seem to phase him. He could do it all in the ring it was is ridiculous i mean some fighters were more other his, his opponents were, were powerful some were faster 
Like I said, he could take a punch, and he had all the power and durability the boxer could possess. Is I mean now, in, now let's talk about Sergio Martinez. What do we know about Sergio? That, that we don't already know already. He's an Argentinian. He's the current Ring Magazine and WBC middleweight champion. He was previously the light middleweight champion. He was he. I think he. I believe he had the WBO Latino title in the welterweight division at one time. And he was. He he did have he had the knock the what the Ring Magazine Knockout of the Year award I believe that was his knockout over Paul Williams. You know without necessarily going into the resume because without a doubt it's it's already obvious who has the better resume out of the two men and that's obviously Marvin Hagler. But in our era of boxing, by era I mean now. I mean. The only people that you can honestly say that Sergio had that were of any threat was Antonio Margarito, who he lost to. He had a draw against Kermit Cintron. He lost to Paul Williams in a very controversial fight. He fought Kelly Pavlik to where he won the ring WBC and WBO middleweight titles before Kelly went on hiatus. He came back to fight Paul Williams and ultimately knocked Paul Williams out. He fought a guy named Matthew Macklin, who necessarily wasn't even worthy of being noted, but nevertheless, that he was. They fought him for the, you know, he fought him for his WBC Diamond Championship, you know, the belt that he had. That he ended up beating from off of uh, Chavez Jr. and again Chavez Jr. who he fought. Now. In, now, if these two men would actually step in the ring, we have to really break down each fighter's attributes and how they complement one another. Marvin was light was not one I guess you could say he was he wasn't light on his feet, you know, he wasn't like Sergio where he would move, he would constantly move and move and move. I cuz Hagler didn't have to move. He had a chin that was impenetrable. He couldn't be knocked out basically. He had a high tolerance to, to to pain and Sergio who has been hit and hurt it seems that Sergio's inability to 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 to, to withstand punishment he sets he, he he basically he sets that off to the side and then basically he, he stay he has uses that with good footwork he sets that off with good footwork um he has we 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 know Sergio has his good power now whether or not that power is enough to to strike down Hagler and beat him will never be known so we pretty much just have to go on facts now the if if these two men were to actually stand up in the center of the ring and go back and forth would Hagler have the speed? Would Hagler have the ring IQ to put Sergio in a position that he couldn't get out of? Would he sit there with with, with Sergio? I don't because I don't think Sergio's not the type of guy who would have to sit there and brawl with a guy like Hagler. He would he would have to move. He have to be on his feet constantly. He would have to be pot shotting him, you know, shooting the jab, throwing that crazy looping left a left hand that he that he that he's known to throw. In hopes of catching him in a Paul Williams ass knockout fashion. Hag- <laughs> now Hagler, I don't believe would have that much trouble catching up to Sergio. And I don't really necessarily think Sergio would have as much trouble landing on Hagler as some people might believe. I mean, Sergio is is fast. He's very fast. Is Hagler faster or as fast? As Sergio to to counteract Sergio's speed, yeah, possibly, but I don't. I'm not. I don't think so. I mean, of the Hagler uh, fights that I've seen, especially against Hearns, Hearns was was known to be fast and powerful, lightning quick. But lightning quick speed wasn't necessarily what 
worked for Hearns because Hagler was every time Hagler threw a shot, it just, it would it would find his target and it would land. It's like Hearns ran out of options. He really didn't under, he didn't really know what to do when he was when he when he started to get hit. Now it's like when Sergio gets hit, it's like his first instinct is to is to move or cover up and go back. You never really see him go into a shell. He's always on. He's always moving. He, he he's moving off to the side. You know, he's not necessarily known to cutting off the ring. Now, would he put Hagler on his on on his on the ball of his heel? Would he make Hagler go back? Ah, it's a, it's a it's a possibility. I mean, it's just that I don't see it to where that Sergio would throw enough heat, or his punch output would be so accumulative that he would beat Hagler in terms of volume. Because Sergio isn't a volume puncher. So, it's kind of hard to break this fight down. When you have, when you have box, when you have two boxers with completely opposite styles. And, but one can always complement the other. But in general, I guess you could say Hagler's power would, out, would overcome Sergio's. But at the same time, Sergio's hasten movement and also his his ability to land punches in, in in different types of combinations from angles that I don't think Hagley could actually see coming. Then you also have to take into account Sergio's chin and Hagler's chin. We already know Hagler's chin is made of steel. You know, you do could take definitely take a punch. Sergio, as I've said before, that that isn't his chin isn't even worth anywhere near and isn't even on par with Hagler's. But I'm eager to understand I'm eager to hear about what the what a lot of the boxing fans on YouTube have to say. If you if this fight was happening this weekend and you had our current middleweight champion versus a past middleweight champion in Marvin Hagler, who would you put your money on? Who would you think would come out on top? Now, just don't say Marvin. I mean, just don't say Marvin Hagler. Just don't say Sergio. If you've never seen the two fight, or you're 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 siding with Hagler just because of what he's done in the past. I mean, this. I mean, styles make fights. Ultimately, just really sit down and really think about the attributes of both opponents and what you believe would truly be the out. What would truly tip the scales in either fighter's favor. I'm eager to hear what a lot of you have to say, but until then, I'm out of here. Peace.